Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be installing Kali Linux in Hyper-V on a Windows 11 PC. Before we begin, let's take a look at the minimum requirements to get this installed. The first thing is RAM, and for RAM, you're going to need at least 2 gigs of RAM. It runs fine on 1, but 2 is recommended. For hard disk space, you're going to want at least 10 gigs available of space. You're going to need the Kali Linux ISO image file, and I'll show you where to download that. You're going to want to have Hyper-V enabled on Windows 11, and if you don't know how to do that, you can check out this video, and I'll show you how to get it up and running. If you find this video useful, please like and consider subscribing. I'm trying to reach as many users as I possibly can. So let's get to this installation. So we're at the Windows 11 desktop, and we want to make sure that we have the Hyper-V feature enabled on our Windows 11 desktop. So we're going to go to the start menu and we're just going to type in turn on Windows features. So we have the turn Windows features on or off right over here. This is in the control panel, but it's easy just to get it from the start menu. You select that and in here, I have it enabled, but you want to make sure that Hyper-V is selected and its features are selected. So you have that checked. Now, if you don't have it checked and it's unselected, when you do select it, you click OK. It's going to apply the features and it's going to want to restart. So allow it to restart, reboot your computer, and then you can come back to the desktop for the next step. Okay, now that you have it restarted, we're ready to open up our Hyper-V. So we're going to click on the start menu again, and we're going to type in Hyper-V. And the Hyper-V manager is going to pop up here. Click on that, and it's going to open it up. So I'm just going to open my browser here, and I'm at the Kali.org website. And we want to click on the download link over here, and we're going to be doing a bare metal installation. So we'll click on this and scroll down a little bit further and you have the latest version, which is Kali Linux 2021.4a. And we're going to be doing the 64 bit version. We'll be using the recommended offline installer. So we'll just click on the download link and it's going to download the ISO file. So this will take a little bit of time for it to download. It's just under three gigs and I'll skip over to the end where it's been downloaded. Okay, the download is complete and I can just double check it by going into my downloads folder here. And there it is as the Kali Linux ISO image file. We'll have to point to that later. So you need to know where you saved it. I'll minimize that and I can get out of this browser. I'll close out of it right now. And in here, which is the Hyper-V manager, and then over on the right hand side, we're gonna select new and select virtual machine. On the first page, we're just going to be clicking on next. Then we have to give it a name. So I'm just going to type in Kali here. So if you run into space issues or you want to locate it somewhere else, you can check this option over here and then select a different drive where you might want to install it. I'll be leaving it in the default location for this installation. For the generation that we're going to be specifying, it will be leaving it as generation one and then click on next. For startup memory, it's giving us a gig to start off with. What I'm going to be doing is giving it two gigs of RAM and I'm going to uncheck the dynamic memory. For the connection, it's not connected right now, so we'll want to make sure that we select the default switch and then click on next. And to create a virtual hard disk space, it's giving us 127 gigs. I'm going to be decreasing this. I'll just put in about 15 gigs for now, and then I'll click on next. And now we're going to be selecting the operating system image. So we'll be selecting this option here and then the ISO image file, and it's in my downloads folder. So here it is. I'll select that and I'll click on open. So then we'll click on next. And now it provides a summary of everything we've just done in this wizard. So you can review everything that's in here and then click on finish when completed. Now that we have everything completed, we're ready to get this started. So we're just gonna select the virtual machine over here. We'll right click on it and then select connect. A window is gonna pop open, which is the virtual machine and we can click on start. So the first option is the installer menu and we're gonna be doing the graphical installation. We'll just select the first option. We're gonna hit enter on our keyboard and now we're gonna be selecting the language. I'm gonna be selecting English and then click on continue and I'll leave the location as default, United States, click on continue. And for the configuration of the keyboard, I'll be leaving it as default as well for American English and then clicking on continue. So the host name right now by default is Kali. I don't need to change that, so I'm gonna leave it as is. And domain name, we're gonna leave that empty. We'll click on continue. So now it's asking for a name, so we'll just put in our name here. This will also be the same thing as your username. And as you can see here, it has Geekrar as well as the username, which is fine by me. If you wanna change that, you can go ahead and do that. Then click on continue. And now you type in a password. It's gonna make sure it matches and then click on continue. So now you're gonna be selecting your desired time zone. I'm in the Eastern time zone, so I'll be leaving that the way it is, and then I'm gonna click on continue. So we've already allocated enough space for this. We're gonna be using the first option, which is use entire disk. It's just gonna be the virtual disk that it'll be partitioning here. Click on continue. Uh, that will be the size of the virtual drive. So click on continue, and we'll be doing it as all files in one partition. So we'll click on continue again. And when you're done, you're able to write the changes. So you can click on continue. And to confirm it, you wanna select yes. 
and continue. Now it's going to install all the components required for this installation. So what I'll do is I'll jump ahead to the next step. The next step is software selection and the desktop environment that you want to use. I'm going to be leaving everything as default and clicking on continue. Now it wants to start the Grub bootloader on your primary drive. So we're going to leave it as yes and then click on continue. Now here we want to make sure that we select the drive that we're going to be using. This is the virtual drive and then we can click on continue and it's finishing the process. It might want to reboot in just a moment here. Okay, the installation is now complete. Uh, it'll reboot the virtual machine and then we can log in. So I'll click on continue and allow it to reboot. We're at the login screen right now and we're going to be typing in the username and password that we had created. And we're loaded up. We're at the desktop of Kali Linux inside Windows 11 using Hyper-V. And if you take a look at the menu here, you have all the preloaded network related tools that you can use immediately. And uh, let's just try to use a browser. Let's see what happens here. We'll just test the internet, make sure it's working okay. So I'll just go to Google and confirm network connectivity. There we go. So we got to Google. So we know that the internet connection is up and running and it looks fine. So that is how you install Kali Linux inside Hyper-V on a Windows 11 PC. If you're looking for tutorials like this or any other operating system, please subscribe to the channel. I have a lot more coming out. Once again, thank you for your support. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for your support and I'll catch you on the next one.